Hey, it's Mike from the Mike Wagner Show. Thanks for tuning in to the Mike Wagner Show on Anchor FM. If you're interested in sponsoring my show, you can send me an email to the Mike Wagner Show at gmail.com, or you could also donate to the uh, podcast. Just go to the Donate Listen site, and um, you can also donate whatever you like. Anchor is the easiest way to make a podcast. For those who are interested, Anchor can give you everything you need in one place for free, which means right from your phone or computer. We've got creation tools. allows you to record and edit podcasts so it sounds great. And those distribute the podcast for you so you can be heard everywhere. Spotify, Apple, Google, many more. And you can make money from the podcast with no minimum listenership. So download the Anchor app for free or go to Anchor FM to get started. It's now time for the Mike Wagner Show. Powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. The Mike Wagner Show brings you famous celebrities and amazing people from all over the world. Listen online at themikewagnershow.com. And on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. And watch the interview on YouTube. So sit back and relax and enjoy the Mike Wagner Show. Hey everybody, it's Mike from the Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today at 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show. Get 10% off your first order. Sonic Web Studios. Take your image to the next level. Also, the Mike Wagner Show can be heard on the Mike Wagner Show.com. You can check our Facebook page at Facebook.com slash the Mike Wagner Show. You can download it and listen on Facebook, <coughs> SoundCloud, Speaker, <coughs> Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also on Anchor FM, Radio Public, also on iTunes, Apple, Google Play. And take the Mike Wagner Show with you on any mobile device and subscribe to the Mike Wagner Show on the YouTube channel. We're here once again with Dr. Cleet Bulek. We had him on earlier. He was talking about the um human relations and um, talked about um, the openness factors, parental trust, and everything else. And he's the author of Enhancing a High-Performing School Culture and Climate and School Climate and Culture Vis-a-Vis Student Learning, published by Roman and Littlefield. He's a retired Ohio School Superintendent and Associate Professor Emeritus at University of West Georgia and also um, Superintendent of the West Virginia Schools. And this time, we'll be talking about test scores and welcoming back to the Mike Wagner Show and live from the beautiful Peachtree State, Dr. Cleet Bulock. Dr. Cleet, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thanks for joining us again. Hey, it's a pleasure being on your show. <laughs> well, it's great. Of course, you know, we enjoyed Ohio State, um, you know, Buckeye cap and everything else. And, uh, and I was going to uh, show you off um, what, one of my adopted alma maters, uh, University of North Dakota. But I guess, um, you know, with some of the technology, that's not possible. We can do that um Another day or so, and um, you have a couple of books called Author of Enhancing a High-Performing School Culture and Climate and School Climate and Culture Vis-a-Vis Student Learning, published by Roman and Littlefield. Your retired Ohio School Superintendent and Associate Professor Emeritus of University of West Georgia. We talked earlier about um, human relations and uh, also addressed uh, each of the factors in the five chapters in Book 1 and, of course, Book 2, Describe how to enhance the uh, changes made in the school reform implemented in Book One, and of course, maybe just uh, give us a little recap on um, on what on, on how you got started, and uh, a little bit about uh, we talked about human relations before getting to test scores, which is quite fairly important these days in the school system. Yep. <clears throat> okay. So how do you want to start this? Uh, okay, well, well, basically just a little recap on, um, you know, for listeners, um, you know, how, how you got started, basically. And, of course, um, you know, a recap from um, book one as well, too. We talked um, early, <coughs> earlier about the um, openness factors, the interpersonal communications, and, um, you know, just a little bit of it. And then we'll talk about the test scores and how it just uh, all comes together. Well, all this started back in 2002 when I got a contract to evaluate every school district in the state of West Virginia on how their schools were implementing character education. So I had to go around to every school district, elementary, middle, and high schools, and interview teachers and students on their character ed program. And basically, I asked, what do you like about your schools? What don't you like about your schools? Uh, 
And <clears throat> based on those thousands of interviews, I came to a realization that most kids don't like to go to school. Mm -hmm. About 50% don't want to go to school. And many teachers uh, don't like to teach. Uh, about half the teachers that I talked to said they were thinking about quitting uh, the profession. <clears throat> and based on all that information, I've decided i got to write a book that will create a school where kids will like to go to school and where teachers don't regret Monday coming and don't regret Friday uh, having to leave. Um, so, you know, a lot of teachers don't enjoy teaching in the current environment in schools across the United States. A lot of kids don't like to go to school. Mm -hmm. So that's why I wrote the two books. One is how to create a school where kids will like to go, where teachers will love to teach. And the second book is on how do you enhance that school. Um, <clears throat> the second book deals basically with uh, uh, how do you communicate. There are five basic communication skills, and we've, we've talked about that, I think. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> how do you deal with conflict? There are five uh, conflict management styles. One of those is how to avoid a conflict, and that's kind of interesting. Uh -huh. uh, and the biggest problem in schools and in life in general is levels of openness and trust. How do you be open to someone? How do you trust someone? Uh, it's all about relationships with teachers and students, with teachers and administration. Do you trust them? Are you open with them or are you guarded? And, <clears throat> and what I found was that in most schools, the culture and climate was not good. Uh, teachers were guarded, protecting their back. Students were guarded uh, with other students, with their teachers. And the relationships, the human relationships in schools, and in many relationships, whether it's a business or wherever, is not good. Mm -hmm. and, and, of course, this also um, comes as well, too, with um, the causes of low <clears throat> test scores and everything else. You talked about a poor school culture and climate. And back in the day, that um, test scores weren't um, you know, very, very, very emphasized now all of a sudden it's become more of an emphasis and everything else and causes stress as well too and um yeah you, you know just a correlation of um you know test scores back then and test scores now and why is it um you know becoming more of a problem again yeah i got an email from the state department of education here in georgia uh, just yesterday uh, <clears throat> who had written an article on the effect of school climate on attendance and the importance of it. And of course, all of my research going back 40 years says that school climate determines test scores, determines attendance, determines discipline, and on and on. <clears throat> and the crazy thing is, most schools do not measure school culture and climate mm -hmm. or use a survey that identifies what they can do to improve it. Uh, a lot of schools, and here in Georgia, uh, they have a school climate measurement, and it tells them uh, whether they have a good school climate or a poor one. Uh -huh. And out of the 2,800 schools here in Georgia, 200 have a very, very poor climate. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't tell them what to do to fix it. It tells them they've got a poor climate. Uh, the survey that I use, and it's on my website, and it's free, um, identifies what you have to do to improve it. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> you've got my uh, you've got my website. I uh, yes yes I do. It's um, I'm trying to find it here. It's um, Doctor 
drcleetbulick.com, and maybe you can just uh, tell it once again. Let's um, go ahead go ahead and look here. So, okay. So, no, so we're trying to find that here, trying to find the website. Just like to remind everybody, you listen to the Mike Wagner Show at the MikeWagnerShow.com, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at SonicWebStudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today at 1 800 303 3960. That's 1 800 303 3960. Or email to support at SonicWebStudios.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show, get 10% off your first order. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, the Mike Wagner Show can be heard on the MikeWagnerShow.com. You can check our Facebook page at Facebook.com slash the Mike Wagner Show. You can also listen on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also on Anchor FM, Radio Public, and also iTunes, Apple, and Google Play. And also take the Mike Wagner Show with you on any mobile device. And you can also just... um. Subscribe to the Mike Wagner Show on YouTube as well. We're, Hoctor, we're here with Dr. Cleet Bulock, and this is at uh, westga.edu. And uh, we're going to um, click on surveys here. So we're going to take a look. Okay, that's not the right one. So, and of course, you know, he's the um, external evaluator for char- character education for state of Georgia and West Virginia. So we have the instructional improvement survey. So if you go to his website, you can just take a look. And um, it just um, gives some um, four items that measure Democrat <clears throat> factors, nice six behaviors. And um, also we have the example of a school's culture and climate graph. So so this is the one you want to um, have us take a look at. Yeah. OK, great. All right. So with the magic technology here, we're just trying to um, get it undone. So we're at um, Microsoft and we're. Take a look right here. So we're opening it. Don't you love computers, by the way? <laughs> okay. okay. All right, here we go. So we got My Place Middle School Culture and Climate Analysis. So we have group openness, scores by variable at 32%, 2007, 32.2, 2008, group trust at 26.4, and group trust 27.7. This is 2008. So from 2007 Group cooperation, 29.7, and group cooperation at 31.7. And we have group atmosphere, 27.3, and then uh, group atmosphere, 29.1, and um, sense of mission at 31.7, and it went up uh, 33.7. And lastly, parent involvement, 32.7 and 33.2. So, you know, those some numbers, and uh, maybe you can just, um, you know, give us a little um, sense on that one. Well, you can see all those numbers are low, mm-hmm. um, <clears throat> and that happened. I've got data on hundreds of schools from California to I've done a lot of work with um, before Belly Up went up in New Jersey. What's that gambling city there? Mm-hmm. Um, well, and Trump Trump had a uh, casino in that city. What was it in New York? In New Jersey, I, that was the gambling capital. Uh, I, I think it was in Atlantic City, I believe. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> I did a lot of work in that school and, until they ran out of money when everything went uh, kaput. Belly up, yes. Uh, <clears throat> belly up. <clears throat> um, and, you know, most of these schools have a poor culture and climate. And if you're a kid, if you walk into a school and you go into the secretary's office and what you see in the hallways and what you see in that office um, determines what the culture and climate is, what's going on in that school, the way people relate to each other. And most schools, it is not good. Mm -hmm. Um, In the state of Georgia, 2,800 schools. Uh, 200 schools have a toxic culture and climate. Uh, 200 have a great culture and climate, and the rest fall all the way in between. And the reason for a school culture and climate is the way people treat each other. Uh-huh. 
uh, the interpersonal relationships between teachers and students and between teachers and the administration and between parents and the administration and the teachers. That determines the culture and the climate. There are 11 indicators of culture and climate, uh, and all of that's on my website, and that survey is there, so I won't repeat it here. Anybody that wants to look at it can look at one of the reports that I have done on a school that I worked with pre and post on their uh, school culture and climate improvement plan. <coughs> Um, this, but then you come up with the five reasons for a school culture and climate. The biggest reason is discipline. What teachers have to do day in and day out to control the misbehavior of students. Give me that note you're writing. Look up here. Get your head up. Sit in your seat. And on and on with the various commands that teachers have to give to students to get them to pay attention in class so they can teach. Mm -hmm. And I have a number of uh, techniques I use to improve that relationship between teachers and students. You want to hear them? Absolutely. Okay. Number one, uh, and I use this as a teacher, as a principal, as a superintendent, and as a college professor. What do you expect of me? as your teacher, as your principal, as your superintendent, as your professor. I give them three three by five cards and I say, I want you to write three expectations that you have of me. And the kids look at me and they say, you want us to tell you what we expect? Because that's not normal. Mm -hmm. In most situations, everybody tells them what they expect, the leader. Mm -hmm. Uh, I try to create this relationship where I am here to serve. I am your servant. I may be your boss and your leader, but basically I need to know what you expect so I can be a better servant, Mm -hmm. leader. Okay. So they give me the cards, and I look at them, and I come up with a chart, and I go back to them. And since there's one thing on every card, even though I've got 125 students, I can quickly sort within one hour, sometimes two. (laughs) I can quickly sort what they expect, and I put them in a common pile. And then I go back to the pile, and I paraphrase what's in the pile. This is what they expect. And I come back, and I share with them, this is what you guys expect of me as your teacher, as your principal, as your superintendent, as your professor. And I tell them, I'm going to do my best to meet your expectations. Here is one expectation that I don't think I can meet if there is one. And normally there were some that were in violation of state rules regarding uh, boards of education that I couldn't meet. So I would tell them what I couldn't do. I'd tell them what I wanted to do. So that was establishing the relationship. I am a servant leader. I am here to serve you, I'm listening, I trust you, I'm taking this risk, um, I care, I care about you guys, that's why I'm doing this. So I established a relationship. Uh, when I was a teacher, the next thing I did was, I said, guys, I need to know what rules you want enforced in this classroom. And they look at me like I'm crazy. They say, <laughs> you want us to tell you what the rules are? I says, yeah. I'd like to know what you think the rules ought to be in this classroom. And I give them three, three by five cards. And again, I'd sort them in the common files. I come up with the rules. I post them on uh, a, a big poster board up on the wall. And those were the rules. And if there was a rule they didn't put in there that I wanted, I just put it in. One of the rules that they fell when I was a teacher for seven years, one of the rules they never put in was, Put your homework in on time. Turn your homework in on time. Really? That was not one of them they wrote? Oh, they hated that one. Oh, my goodness. Wow. So I, I, I just put it in. Turn your homework in on time. Uh, <clears throat> when I was a principal, the big one was um, disciplining teachers who didn't 
uh, turn in the clock, punch in the clock at 7.30, because that was when most teachers had to report. Mm -hmm. They said, you need to deal with the individuals who don't report on time. Don't talk to the entire faculty about reporting in on time. Deal with the individuals. Uh Uh, That was one of the expectations. Anyway, uh, once the rules went up, you could see the light bulbs going off in the kids. They would say, oh, I wrote that rule. That's my rule. (laughs) That's my rule. That's my rule. And the crazy thing was, you know, when a kid violated the rule, whose rules were they violating? Their own. Yeah. (laughs) So I was serving the students. Uh huh. They were not obeying the teacher. Mm-hmm. So one of life's there are, are five needs that all human beings have. One of those is control. All human beings have a need to control their life, and that varies from a, a low need to control to a high need to control to a control freak. Mm-hmm. Uh, but every kid has a need to control. So I gave them control. They had the rules. So when a rule was violated, I'd look up there and I'd say, somebody's violating rule number two. And they'd look over at the kid who's violating rule number two. <laughs> what do you think that kid did? Uh-oh, I wrote that rule. <laughs> uh, and and <clears throat> the, the other interesting thing, I had a teacher out in Las Vegas, he says, You know what I've done with your uh, rules? He said, when a kid violates a rule and they don't change it, I go to the students and I say, thumbs up or thumbs down. Do you want me to send this kid to the office for violating that rule? You give control. Here's the secret to leadership, whether you're a parent a leader, a supervisor, or anywhere. You give control to the people below you, Mm -hmm. but you never give it up. Right. So when the teacher says, so-and-so is violating rule number two, do you want to send him to the office, thumbs up or thumbs down? Looks out there, and nine times, 99% of the time, is thumbs up. The other students send the kid to the office. So who's the bad guy? Hmm. That's interesting. Whoever wrote the rule almost sounds like a democracy. Uh, I I tell you what, when you give control to the students, they are going to do what they need to do. And and when you talk about politics, the socialism thing that's going on right now, Uh control. Who, in a socialist society, who has control? The government. Uh Uh-huh. It's a disaster. Mm -hmm. When you take control away from the people, it's a disaster. In a democracy, you give control to the people, but the government does not give it away. Right. You've got the Supreme, you've got the Supreme Court, you've got the Constitution, you've got the law officials, you've got all of this stuff that you've given control to the people in a democracy, but you don't give it up. Mm -hmm. That's why our country has been so successful because it it allows the people who live here to have some control over what happens to them. When you take control away, as in socialism, it's a disaster mm-hmm. it, because the people's needs aren't being met. I, we haven't talked about the people's needs, have we? Um, I I think we I have. Think we but, did in another. Oh, okay. You know what? It. it just in case, if we did not, it's it's go. You can go ahead and do so as well too. So let's go ahead and cover okay. that base, just in case. <clears throat> well, one of the other things I did to give control at the end of the school year, I asked the kids, Doctor Bewock, in that case, when I was a, a teacher, Mister Bewock is a good teacher because complete that sentence as many times as you want. And the second one was, Mister Bewock would be a better teacher if so is a good teacher because identified my forces for being a good teacher would be a better teacher if identified forces against <clears throat> force field analysis has been 
was introduced back in the 50s under Kurt Lewin, L-E-W-I-N, and anybody listening can go on the web and, <coughs> and look that up. This is my simplified version. Good because, be better if. And the students would write why they thought I was a good teacher, mm-hmm. why they thought I'd be a better teacher. I did that when I was a principal. I did it when I was a superintendent. I did it when I was a college professor. And the data that you get back is one of the five basic communication skills, feedback. How do you get good feedback? That's the best way to get good feedback on how you're doing. Anybody listening out there, whether you're a minister, whether you're a judge, whether you're a a supervisor on an assembly line, ask the people below you. It's good because would be better if. And you will get great feedback. And if you get somebody that says, you're good because and I have all the things you're good because and nothing better if, throw that away. Mm -hmm. If you get somebody who rips you and has nothing good to say about you and rips you, throw that away. Uh The ones in between are looking at you to help you. Mm-hmm. So, okay. So, so they don't love the other ones. Don't love you, and the other ones don't hate you. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, so basically. Uh, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, let's see. We were talking about the six reasons for low test scores in school culture and climate, and the major cause for school culture and climate to be not good is discipline. Is that where you want to go? Um, I, I, we can head th- towards that direction, and I think we talked about as well, too, it's how you word things, and some people take it the right way, some people take it the wrong way, but poor school, culture, and climate um, you know, is something to be addressed as well in terms of discipline. We'll talk about it you know, very quickly. You listen to The Mike Wagner Show at themikewagnershow.com, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable, custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today at 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention The Mike Wagner Show. Get 10% off your first order. Sonic Web Studios. Take your image to the next level. Also, The Mike Wagner Show can be heard on themikewagnershow.com. You can check our Facebook page at facebook.com slash themikewagnershow. You can download and listen on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also on Anchor FM and Radio Public. Also on iTunes, Apple, and Google Play. Take The Mike Wagner Show with you on any mobile device and subscribe to The Mike Wagner Show on the YouTube channel. We're here with Dr. Cleet Bulock um, talking about the um, test scores, and also <coughs> he's got the... Um, Two books, as we mentioned as well, too. And we'll quickly jump over to um, six causes of low test scores. We've covered some of it, and specifically poor school culture and climate. And one of them involves discipline. So let's talk about that. And, of course, it's obvious what's happening in the media as well, too. Lack of discipline, you know, running rampant in the schools today. Okay. All right, go ahead. Well, uh, one of the major problems, with we talked about school culture and climate, and I talked about the things you could do to improve school culture and climate, which was the expectations, diagnosis, and setting the rules, and finding out how your leadership is perceived, getting feedback on how you're coming across. And then you, you get to the second cause of school culture and climate. It's discipline. I have, uh, I'm 81 years old. I have sat in hundreds of teachers' classrooms. I've supervised many student teachers and watched how they deal with behavior in the classroom. On an average day in a class, five, uh, a one-hour class or a 45-minute class, the teacher has to stop teaching to correct student misbehavior on average five times. Wow, five times, and that is the second one, time lost in the instructional process because teachers have to stop teaching to correct a student, and it's five times. Wow. Well, five times is normal. I mean, I have been in a classroom where 10 and 15 times was the average. Unbelievable. Uh, But it disrupts the learning process. Uh, 
Mm-hmm. So give me that note. Sit up. Look up here. Stop talking. And on and on with what goes on in the classroom. And in many classrooms today, with the stupid federal government, they, they put special ed students in classrooms, which disrupts the learning process completely. Mm-hmm. But anyway, <clears throat> so I came up with this process on how to uh, reduce discipline problems in classrooms by 75%. It was very simple. I said, I, I had the teachers count how many times they had to stop teaching to correct misbehavior. And on an average week, it would be 100 times. Wow. Okay? Mm-hmm. Or 50. Mm-hmm. They'd go back to the students and they'd say, you know, I had to stop teaching last week 50 times to correct student misbehavior. I tell you what, if you will help me with that and you can reduce it by 25%, I'll give you an extra five minutes of recess time. And the teachers look at the teacher like she's she's crazy or he's crazy. <laughs> You're going to give us an extra five minutes of recess? Yeah, if you'll help me. Will you see students not doing what they're supposed to do? Help me out. <clears throat> and they do it. Interesting. They do it. And I've done it many times. When I didn't feel good, I'd go into the classroom and I'd say, guys, I don't feel very good today. How about help me out? And they would take over. They'd take over the classroom. That is interesting. I do, That's interesting. Huh? I heard something about that. That is very interesting. I'm glad you mentioned it. Well, it's control. I mm-hmm. gave control to the kids. I said, help me out. You see something that shouldn't be done? Correct it. I don't need to do this. And they would do it. But when you set up this system of a reward for all the kids they get, if they help you out with discipline, they will jump all over it. Mm. And you give control to the kids. You don't give it up. And they love they love being part of the discipline problem. And in schools where this was done, uh, discipline problems redu- were reduced by 75%. Wow. Uh, so the teacher had more time to teach, had more time to enjoy being a teacher, being in a classroom, being working with the students instead of the students working against the teacher. And you set up that system with all of the things I told you about, what do you want the rules to be? What do you expect of me? What kind of teacher do you think I am? And uh, this system, discipline problems are reduced by 75%. Then you've got the nine forms of power. Okay. Mm -hmm. And and that's the overuse of four controlling forms of power versus five freeing forms of power causing resistance. That's another point, too. I love to hear that one. Well, you know, most teachers get position power when they're hired. Mm-hmm. When you get position power, you get the re- the ability to reward and punish. Mm-hmm. Those are the controlling forms. The other form of controlling power is called connection power. The guy who hired you gives you position, reward, and coercion power. As long as that guy likes you or person likes you, you have position, reward, and coercion power. If that person doesn't support you, you lose position, reward, and coercion power, which happens so many times in schools all across the United States. A teacher sends a student to the principal or whoever's doing the discipline for punishment, and that person doesn't do anything. Mm -hmm. What happens to the teacher's position power? It gets diminished. Yes. And if that happens more than once or twice or often, the teacher's position power is nothing. The kids run rampant in that classroom, and the teacher quits. Mm -hmm. That happens in years three to five too many times. Mm -hmm. The freeing forms of power are, and I'll just rattle them off, information, expertise, personality, ego, 
and moral. These are the forms of power that most teachers and leaders out there and parents out there can use. You give your kids, you give your people information, which is what we're doing right now. Uh We're giving all your listeners information, right? Right, yes. So they're listening. They're saying, wow, that's interesting. I think I'll try to do that. Mm -hmm. So it's freeing. Expertise is when someone demonstrates, which teachers do every day uh, in the classroom, what the kids need to do to get a good grade. And what uh, supervisors do on assembly lines all across the United States, what leaders do, what Trump does, they demonstrate how to do things. Mm -hmm. And the people look at it and they say, yeah, that's interesting. I think I'll do that. So it's freeing. Then you get to personality, which Trump's personality <laughs> is not always the best. Okay. Uh, of course, well, <clears throat> well, that's open to debate as well. And it's just like, yeah. you know, everybody knows by now how big Trump's ego is. It's like you have to live in a cave to don't know how big his ego is. Oh, my God. Well, Media plays yeah. part in this, too, but we'll, we'll talk about uh, that another time, but go ahead. <laughs> on the next form of power, he does pretty good, and that's ego power. But anyway, personality power um, is people like you because people like you. All you got to do is say, hey, can you help me with this? And they say, yeah, I'll, I'll help you with that. Mm-hmm. It's freeing. Mm-hmm. They like you, and they'll, they'll, they'll help you. You come to ego power. Ego power is when you stroke someone's ego to get them to do what you want. Uh-huh. It's, it's, it's kind of a ma- manipulation, and whenever you feel manipulated with this form of power, you resist. Right. Uh, if you stroke somebody's ego too many times to get them to do something, uh, they say, what the hell does he want this time? Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and, anyway, it loses, and it loses effectiveness, too. Yes, yes. Uh, ego power is a tremendous form of power. You go to somebody and say, hey, you know, you did such a great job with this last year. How about help me out? Mm-hmm. And they say, oh, sure, I'll, I'll help you out. It's a freeing form of power. Uh, there's a, another form of ego power. It's called the negative ego stroke. Uh-huh. I don't know if we have enough time to go into that. Uh, we, 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 we have a few minutes, but uh, go right ahead. Okay. Uh, I, I gave my talk on power to all of my graduate students, and I said, has anybody got another form of power that I haven't talked about? And one day a coach says, yeah, I got one. I says, what is it? He says, I do a negative ego stroke. I says, well, tell me how that works. He says, I go to the, the team and I say, all right, you guys, we're playing this team across town today, and I'm not sure that we can beat them. Uh-huh. They look at me and they say, Coach, what are you talking about? I says, well, they're a good team. Coach, we can beat their ass. <laughs> the negative ego stroke, uh, and the one I do in my book, is Muhammad Ali. Oh, when he was yes. in the fourth grade, uh, Cassius Clay. Mm-hmm. When he was in the fourth grade, his teacher said, Cassius, you're never going to amount to anything. You're just a dumb black kid. Oh. You know, when he won the uh, Olympic glove in Cuba Mm -hmm. for boxing, Uh guess where he went the first time he got back in town? (laughs) He went right back to the school, and I'm sure, yeah, 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 just um, made the teacher wrong. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yes, he did. That, that, uh, the negative ego stroke uh, is a tremendous motivator if done on the right person. Mm-hmm. If done on the right person, they'll say, yeah, you're right. I can't do it. Uh huh. So it is my, it's manipulation at its highest level. It has to be done on the right people, and you got to know what you're doing. And, of course, it has to be uh, pro- proper timing as well. <clears throat> Moral power is the best form of power. Parents listening out there, anyone listening out there, what are the rules in your household? What are the rules in your organization? Do they know them? 
Most parents don't have the rules listed. The kids have to learn what's right and wrong. And sometimes they get punished because they didn't know what the rule was. Um, so, you know, in my, we've got five kids and I ask them, what do you, what do you think the rules ought to be in this house? And I give them all three of my five cars. What do you want the rules to be in this house? And curfew was one of the rules. We agreed on curfew was 12 o'clock. Uh-huh. Uh, we get into one of the five conflict management styles, uh, avoidance. Uh, and we can hit on that in a little bit if you want. But <clears throat> if the kids know what the rules are and they violate a rule, all you got to do is say, hey, the rule is, and you didn't do it. And they say, oh, I forgot. And normally, when you remind people of what the rules are, they will say, oh, you're right. And they change and correct their behavior. So moral power is, what is the right thing to do in this organization, in this school, in this family, in this company, in this so forth, wherever you are. What are the rules? If they know what the rules are and they violate a rule, normally all you got to do is remind them that they violated the rule. Mm -hmm. And they will say, oh, yeah, I screwed up. And they will change. Mm -hmm. But if you don't have moral power in place, what are the rules in a family, in an organization? When I went to the kids and I say, what do you want the rules to be in this classroom? Moral power was in place. Uh, when I went to the t faculty and I said, what do you think the expectations ought to be here? I knew what I had to do uh -huh. uh, and so forth. Moral power is the most powerful form of power. Mm -hmm. But if they don't know what the rules are, the right thing to do. When I was a school superintendent, the boards... Out of the 14 years, I had two years at, with a good school board. Those board members would fight with each other, and I would put a, a big banner across the back of the room. What's the right thing to do? And when I couldn't stop them from fighting, I would say, hey, guys, what's the right thing to do? And I'd bring them back to thinking about what was the right thing to do instead of what they were into. Uh-huh. Uh, moral power. So here we go. Five freeing forms of power. Information, personality, expertise, uh, ego, and moral power. Mm -hmm. Any leader out there, any parent out there should use those forms of power to control their kids. Mm -hmm. and when the kids do not do what they're supposed to do, when the employee does not do what they're supposed to do, you have to go to the four controlling forms of power, position, reward, and coercion. Mm -hmm. As a leader, you give control to people, but you never give it up. Mm -hmm. And I'm not a fan of Trump, but he has not given up control. He gives control to Kim Jong-un. He gives control to Iran. He gives control... To France, he gives control to England, he gives control to the UN, he gives control to Congress, but he doesn't give it up. Uh huh. It, and that's the mark of a true leader, a true parent, a true anyone who is a leader. Give control to people, but don't give it up. Mm -hmm. And, and, and I think. And I think that's something that's um, needed as well, too, in families. And, of course, you know, speaking of um, families, being involved in parent and community, we'll talk about in just a minute. You listen to The Mike Wagner Show at themikewagnershow.com, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today at 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Nine six zero or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show, get 10% off your first order. Sonic Web Studios, 
Take your image to the next level. Also, The Mike Wagner Show can be heard on themikewagnershow.com. You can check our Facebook page at facebook.com slash themikewagnershow. You can download and listen on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also on Google Play, Apple, and iTunes. Also on Radio Public and Anchor FM. Also take The Mike Wagner Show with you on any mobile device and subscribe to The Mike Wagner Show on the YouTube channel. We're here with Dr. Cleet Bulock, the author of Enhancing a High-Performing School Culture and Climate and also School Climate and Culture Vis-a-Vis Student Learning, published by Roman and Littlefield. He's a retired Ohio School Superintendent, Associate Professor Emeritus of University of West Virginia, and also superintendent of the um, West Virginia and Georgia schools. We were talking about the six causes of low test scores and went into very great detail, which was greatly appreciated, especially in today's school culture and society. And, of course, there's also parents and community in you know, in the school system, but yet there's a failure that's um, involving parents and community. That's part of the uh, low test scores. You can just uh, talk about that. So, so basically, okay. it's like there's a failure to involve the parents and community. It's like you know, it, it it sounds like with the um the whole school system, but then for some reason that the schools don't involve the parents and community, and makes you wonder, you know, you know, why is that? Well, it's difficult. Um, in the elementary schools, most of the parents come in and visit with the teacher and so forth a lot, but in the middle and high school, the teachers. Um, I asked the teachers in West Virginia, what do you like about your schools? And they said, the parents. And I said, what don't you like about your schools? And they said, the parents. <laughs> I said, well, tell me about that. And they said, well, some of these parents, they'll do anything we want. They'll help us. They care about us. They'll listen to us. They are here. They are our support. And then you've got these other parents, and and we're talking about 75% or more. Mm-hmm. They don't like us. They, they, you know, in rich communities, they consider us our ser- their servants, and they want to control us and tell us what to do. So many teachers in the wealthier communities don't like the parents because the parents out there think they're better, mm-hmm. and they are, money wise, professional. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, how do you get parents involved? in the school so that they support the school. And I have an interesting program called Character Ed. I've investigated, I've been uh, character evaluators in two states and, and, and many other states with school districts, California, uh, Atlantic City, and on and on, hundreds of schools evaluating their Character Ed programs. Most character ed programs start off positive. You you gather the data the first year using my survey, which is on my website, and it is free, to evaluate how students perceive the behavior of the other students on 28 character traits, 16 sets of character traits. And you get a baseline data, and then you put in your your character ed program. And every in every district in the first year, scores go up. Year two, scores move up a little bit. Year three, scores go down. Year four, schools scores are back where they were in year one. Uh huh. Character ed programs do not work because teachers don't like it. Every year they got to do the same thing. In the state of Georgia, there's a state law that says you must have a character education program and you must file it with the State Department of Education. Well, every year they file it, but there's nothing happening. I mean, if you were to go into schools today, there wouldn't be anything you could see in a few schools, you've got all these posters, and you've got these. Each hallway is called uh, uh, a different character ed hallway, truthfulness hallway, and on and on with the, the markers. But here's what you got to do if you want to have parents involved: you identify one trait 
that you're going to hammer all year. And my suggestion is you start the year with courtesy. So you go to the kids and you say, if people were courteous to you, what would you want them to do or say? You go to the teachers and you say, if people were courteous in this school, what would you want them to do to say? At the open house in the fall, you go to the parents and you say, if people were courteous at this school, what would you want them to do or say? You go to the Chamber of Commerce and you say, if people were courteous in this town, what would you want them to do or say? And you compile out of all of their responses on the three by five cards, you compile a list of eight, nine, ten, whatever, how many behaviors you you think you can put on a poster. And the Chamber of Commerce comes up with a nice poster. Courtesy in Podunk is this. And it gets posted in the post office. It gets posted in every church. Gets posted in every business, gets posted everywhere, gets posted in every bus, gets posted in every classroom, and for one, and gets posted on every refrigerator at home. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and for one year, everybody in this town is focused on how to be courteous, wow. because most people most people don't think about what is courtesy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, you know. yeah, yeah. Courtesy is just simply common sense, you know. Please, thank you, and um, some. some well, I, and I put on it, and don't write thank you uh-huh. and please, because you know everybody will write that as two of the behaviors. I want to know more than please and thank you. Uh, cussing is a discourteous behavior. Mm-hmm. It's the worst. Uh, when I do my character ed survey, cussing is the lowest score on all 96 of the character ed behaviors. It's the lowest. And humility is the lowest character trait with the lowest score. Wow. <laughs> and if you look at the Bible, humility is one of the traits that Jesus said was the most important. Mm-hmm. And that yeah. is, and that is so true. And I have to say this: humility, in in my view, is lacking in society today. It is. It is. Um, and, and I'm I'm afraid in my career I have not always been you humility. I my humility has been lacking. But in my now that I'm eighty, I'm humble. <laughs> uh, I try to show some humility. But anyway, uh, so every year, instead of, in Georgia, you're supposed to teach all 28 character traits, one a week. And they've done it every year for four years, and the kids say, oh, we did that last year. The teachers say, I'm tired of doing this stuff. I'd mm-hmm. rather teach reading. I'd rather teach history. I'd rather teach, I don't want to do this crap. Mm-hmm. And so the the enthusiasm for it is not there. But if you were to identify one trait each year and identify 10 behaviors for that trait and get it out to the community and get it out to the parents, post it on the refrigerator, you would involve the entire community and all the parents in your endeavor to change the behavior on one trait. The next trait that I recommend is Mm self-respect because self-respect, you know, kids with sex and drugs and clothing and body uh, grooming and so forth, there's self-respect is not something that a lot of kids pay a lot of attention to. Mm -hmm. Uh, And of course, cussing would be right back. Some of these traits go over. If you have self-respect, why would you cuss? Exactly. Uh, It's what you see in the media as well, too, which I have to say is that it's not encouraging. So every year you would change the trait. Mm -hmm. So since there are 28 character traits out there, they would never get bored with the traits (laughs) because you're changing it every year. Uh But every year you would just capitalize or reinforce on the previous trait. If you look at um, 
courtesy and if and 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 everybody can choose what they want to do next the next you could go with compassion that's a good one yes that's what we and and, uh compassion would reinforce everything you did in courtesy and then you got truthfulness Mm -hmm. uh and on and on and the crazy thing is the school systems out there don't have no clue what they're doing on character ed. Did you know that there are two sets of character traits? Uh, there are, go ahead. There are traits that determine how I treat myself. Hmm. So truthfulness is what I do. Uh-huh. Responsibility is what I do. Compassion and courtesy is what a, how I treat others. So the traits that are out there, half of them determine how a person treats others, and the other half determine how I act. Mm-hmm. And, and it, you know, you, you have to separate those. You cannot do trade on how I treat others one year and how I treat myself the next. You have to reinforce what you just did. Uh, I mean, if you're a ball player and you've got a swing uh, at a ball, you've got to reinforce how that swing occurs. But you can't tell a person how to swing on one ball and then work on his footwork on the next one. Right. Uh, anyway, e- I don't know where you want to go from e- here, every- Mark. Everything all comes together, and let's cover our last one and since we have about a few minutes left. Low levels of openness and trust between administrators, teachers, and students. That seems to be the very, very big one, and one of the causes of low test scores. Yes, and that's happening all over the schools these days, and it seems like there's a lot of resistance be- when it comes to openness and trust between administration, teachers, and students. And, um, you know, you can talk about that and also the best way to fix it. Okay. Are you ready to roll on that one? Absolutely. Okay. Openness and trust is always the lowest score Uh in any school. Every school I've ever measured, that is always the lowest score. Uh, Openness has two dimensions. It's a telling and a listening dimension. Many administrators are very open on how to tell their teachers what to do. Many teachers are very open on how to tell the students what they expect. But listening is the most important human behavior. It is at the top of the list. I've been asked many times, what's the most important human behavior that you would recommend to improve what happens in the United States? It's listening. Mm -hmm. Now, Trump uh, is very good at telling. Right. We don't know how good he is at listening. Uh, the media would say he's awful. He's a dictator. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and, and of course, if you, if you have noticed too, that, um, you know, he always has his advisors, but then he just goes by his own decision. Yeah, he always does. Mm-hmm. But I'm thinking that he does a lot of listening to the people that he has hired, but he's very high on the telling dimension. So, Openness is critical. When it comes to Obama, he was not, he was very low on the listening dimension. He was very high on the telling dimension. <laughs> and that was his problem. Okay, trust has five dimensions. <laughs> There's the overall character dimension. Uh, at the bottom of the character dimension is, do they care about me? Uh, who are they? And of course, the uh, with Obama, who is he? Where was he born? Mm-hmm. How did he get where he got? Who is paying for all this? Uh, on that dimension, authenticity, he was not trusted and is not trusted today because nobody knows. Uh, <clears throat> So that's one dimension of trust, the character dimension. Then there's truthfulness. And, of course, truthfulness, if Clinton 
uh, he would be very low on that dimension. Okay. I I could tell. It's like, you know, I didn't do it. I only touched, sniffed, or maybe just a bit of it or something. It's like, you know, I can sense that. It's like it was all over the news, obviously. Yeah. Uh, truthful enough, uh, on that dimension, uh, I don't know how I would rate Trump. But I would certainly rate him a lot higher than uh, Clinton. Mm -hmm. Then you come to confidentiality. Uh, If you blow a confidence to anyone, they're going to trust you, right? Exactly. You're right. But of course, you know, let's just keep it on the teachers as well, too. And, um, you know, we'll talk about another time with presence and everything else. But with the confidentiality, Mm -hmm. it's like you had a high level of confidentiality between teachers and students. But then with social media, it seems like has a confidentiality has is it still there? Has it improved or has it just dropped? Well, trust in uh, in the White House administration is blown because they don't know who is providing information to the news media. Confidentiality is blown. Mm-hmm. Uh, predictability is the fourth. Uh, Trump seems to be pretty predictable. Right. Um, if you go to someone with a problem and they say, oh, yeah, you're right. That's something I got to deal with. I'll take care of it. And then you go to them with another problem, and they say, well, I don't see what's so wrong about that. Mm-hmm. I think we'll just let that go. Uh-huh. Predictability is a big trust factor. Mm-hmm. Oh, and- I'm having a senior moment here. What was the fifth one? It's uh, truthfulness. Uh, oh, ability. Ability, Ability that's right. is the fifth one. Uh, on ability, you'd have to score Trump on a scale of one to five on a five. Uh-huh. Because he has delivered. On ability, on Obama, I'm going to let you decide what <laughs> or, that or, one is. Or, or, let the, uh, or let the listeners decide. We can do that, too. So let the <laughs> listeners decide on that one. And, of course, you know, yeah. the teachers as well, too. So so I have to <clears throat> so I have to say this is that um, you can talk about those as well, too, another time. And, um, you know, once again, uh, Dr. Cleet Bulock, just want to say a big thank you for your time as well, too. Author of Enhancing a High-Performing School Culture and Climate and School Climate and Culture Vis-a-Vis Student Learning, published by Rowan and Littlefield. Tell everybody where you can uh, get the books, and uh, what's your website? Well, I'm on LinkedIn. Uh, Anybody can look me on there. i got a lot of stuff posted there. I've got a second website called Improving Our Schools. There's a lot of stuff posted there on what can be done to improve our schools. A lot of leadership information. Uh, The secondhand compliment is one of my little articles on What's the importance of giving a secondhand compliment versus complimenting a person personally? There's a big difference. Uh, anyway. Okay. Well, uh, you've been a great host, Mike, and I appreciate being on your show. And anytime you want me back, I'll be happy to be there. Definitely will. And just want to say a big thank you for your time, uh, Dr. Cleet Bulick. You've been fantastic. Looking forward to having you again soon. And uh, please do everybody a favor. Keep us up to date, and if there's uh, any other new information, or if there's a way it can help, and um, you know they can contact you and let us know. And um, look forward to having you again soon. You've been excellent, I have to say. I learned a lot from you. Wish I was your teacher. <laughs> okay, you take care. Thanks for listening to the Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Listen online at themikewagnershow.com and on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. And watch the interview on YouTube. Also, become a sponsor of the program and or donate today at themikewagnershow.com. Join us again tomorrow for another episode of the Mike Wagner Show.